Hello. There you are, young lady. There we are. <laughs> Reunited. <laughs> it's so good to hear your voice again. And, yeah, uh, yeah, good. I'm glad this all worked out right. Back and got the big show oh with the gang here in uh, in town. And I was looking at your, I guess it's your website, some of your social media. It seems like it was just yesterday we had you guys in the studio, but it was back in 2017, if you can believe that. Mm, and really? Yeah, it was in some sometime in 2017. And since then, yeah. just a truckload of stuff you've been up to, including releasing The Junction. And I'm guessing that's going to help inform the show that we're, we're getting. Well, yeah. I mean, we're, you know, that that record was a kind of a new milestone for us in terms of our new member, Trist Curlis, is on this. Um, we, we kind of ventured back to the beginning sounds of the group. But with a modern, you know, twist to it, Merv Warren, our producer, kind of, you know, helped helped that along. And uh, but it really sounds like a traditional transfer record, I think, because it's got all that eclecticism. You know, it's got like a really beautiful, like a bossa, mm. you know, song, and then a, a real hardcore electro swing, and then uh, a little tip of the hat to Tuxedo Junction on a song called The Junction. And then we did like a Herbie Hancock uh, Cantaloupe Island, but turned it into a vocal of the rap that was done on top of Cantaloupe Island back in the 90s by a group. So we, we kind of, it's it's like full circle in a strange way. And we wrote a lot of it. So that was kind of, you know, that was really, you know, at this point, if we can't write for ourselves because we know what we do best, Right. We're kind of like crazy at this point. So it, it really was a, a a good a good choice with our producer and it, it took it took quite a while. You know, it was almost ten years since the last C D. So it was time. <laughs> On that uh certainly was with a decade in between. On that note of time and also the writing process, was it something where the songs accumulated over that decade or where it was done in uh explain I guess the time frame of when uh, the compositions were written? Not really. I mean, over that decade, a lot happened. Um, I got ill a couple times, and I was off the road. Right. And, uh, and then Tim got very sick, Tim Hauser, and he passed away. And so we were, we were just kind of hanging on. You know, we were we were in the grip and tight to just hanging together and keeping it moving and trying to get through the different illnesses. And then Tris came in and replaced Tim, and I came back out. I went, I'm all clean bill of health now so there were there was a lot that went on during that period of time and no we weren't working on new music until until the time came to work on new music you know well that's one of those kind of things where i mean lots of different milestones heavy ones and mm -hmm. obviously things to be grateful for with your health and to have mm -hmm. uh trist in the band of course uh i can imagine a lot of things happen in that kind of time frame and and mm -hmm. that's a long time for for creative uh, export to be piling up too, and and then to yeah. co come out in, yeah. into the record. You also got a uh, another. You guys have been honored a lot through the years, of course. Uh, and we'll talk about Very some nice. of yeah. some of your cool honors in a moment. But one recent one, again, sort of just highlighting things that have happened with the Manhattan Transfer since you were last with us, is the uh, National Music Council American Eagle Award. I see. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I don't know what to say about it. It's just <laughs> another uh, tip of the hat that we're, you know, we're very grateful for all of this. You know, any acknowledgement of a group that's been around, you know, like 47 years is, is pretty remarkable in my book. So, you know, we're always grateful and, and I hope humble by this. You know, it's that we're that we're still being recognized in that way. It's really, yeah. Very nice. When you got that award, wasn't it Chick Corea also getting honored, a guy that you guys had an unusual yeah. connection to because you did a whole record cover and his stuff, and then there you are yeah. with him. He was getting an award know, then yeah. too, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was nice. It was very nice. Uh, you know, obviously we're we're huge fans. He's definitely one of our musical heroes. And uh, that project was not, you know, that was challenging. It was not as easy as we thought it was going to be because his music, you know, you love it, you listen to it, but then you go, oh, we're going to sing this. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> 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 so we bit off a lot, not more than we could chew, but it was really uh, 
probably the most challenging record we've ever we've ever attempted. I'm wow. real proud of it, but it it didn't quite translate it as well to our fans and to uh, to radio in any sense. I don't know. So, you know, we just what I love about this group so much about it that it, it we just try stuff. You know, we get inspired and we just go for it. It's not like we're trying for a commercial hit. Right. You know, those days have, are past. Because what is that now? There's no clear definition of what a hit record is. You know, it's it's so vast and so like uh, you know all over the map with with groups now that we just try and do what what inspires us and what we get a passion for. And that's not easy because there's four people. You know, it could be four different passions. You know. <laughs> No, that's we true. Have to, like I said, when it came around to doing this this record, we had to kind of let it sit for a while and brew and kind of work it like a you know like a like a stew and stir it and stir it <laughs> until we were finally ready to sit in the room together and start talking about music, you know, and then bringing in ideas to each other. But you have to like, I think anyway, with this group, I've I have no experience in other groups, but. You have to kind of wait until it's ready. You know, it being the the bigger, you know, the the bigger umbrella of what our creative thing is. You know, you just you can't push it or force it. You kind know? of like being so, a, a winemaker. Yeah, in yeah, a way. Kind of. You have to let it just sit. And yeah, yeah, and ferment. <laughs> <laughs> well, you in in that time on that note of what what you you let sit, and then other things that are I guess ready, and and the percolation process has led to a release. You released a solo record uh, since we last talked. Rearrangements of Shadows, the music of Stephen yeah. Sondheim. Yes, I did. I mean, this is something I wanted to do for many, many, many years, and was honestly too scared to attempt his music. I thought I I want to sing his music. I don't know if I can do it. You know, I was really honestly terrified because the closer you get to learning a piece of his, any piece, I don't care, you have to be sure you know what you're doing, you know, because <laughs> <laughs> it's, not, it's not easy music, and he's definitely my hero. And I, uh, I like I said, when I, after I went through my, uh, my two bouts of, of cancer, I, I came out of it going, it's time to do this now. You know, there's no time like the present because right. who knows what's going to happen tomorrow. You know, it gives you a real kind of, you know, very bold and sobering clarity when you go through anything. You know, anyone, there, so many people have gone through such, you know, a lot worse things than I have. So I thought it's now or never. You know, whatever my voice is going to sound like, and it it's a little lower from, you know, from whatever, just from life, I guess, you know, being around for all these years. So I did take the step and started choosing tunes, and that wasn't easy. I thought it was going to be easy to pick his song. <laughs> it's not, because they're all directly connected with storyline in his shows. So you you pluck one out and then you go, ooh, no one's going to understand what I'm doing here because it doesn't connect with what happened in the show before the song or where it's, where the song is taking the, you know what I mean? The context, like, yeah. Yeah, and I didn't consider that at all. So I really had to think it through and, and try and try and remove the songs from what's, what, lives, what they live with, you know, what lives around them. It was hard. It was difficult. But I used really wonderful, you know, jazz musicians to kind of just take it outside, you know. And I don't know if he would approve. I, I don't, I'm too terrified to ask him or <laughs> let him hear the music. So, but I learned a lot. You know, I produced it myself along with my, uh, uh, my engineer, Tom McCauley. And it, we just did it. We just, you know, gave it a, gave it our best shot. And I'm, I'm real proud of it. I'm really proud. What's the tune that, uh, didn't Judy Collins, that's one of her biggest hits was, uh, the Steven. Oh, send in the clown. Did you yeah. do that on there? I didn't see the full. Yes, I did. And I did it <laughs> with my dear friend, Mark Kibble from take six. Oh, wow. He did a vocal, uh, track for me with a bunch of voices. Most of them are his. And I, and that's what he wanted to do. I wanted him to do another song. He goes, I'd rather do Send in the Clowns. So I went, well, I'm not going to say no. I wasn't going to do that song. It's too obvious, you know, and it's been right. done, you know, beautifully by her, et cetera. And, but he brought in a really interesting, beautiful acapella track, and I just, I loved it. So we did it. 
That's, that's <laughs> happening. I, I see another thing that you guys uh, did, I guess, again, in between when you were uh, on the show with us and, and us talking now. You had, uh, for the last few years prior to this Christmas time, uh, Herb, Alpert, and Lonnie Hall had been playing here in Honolulu doing like a Blue Note, uh, doing a Blue Note thing. And I okay. see that you guys did a Manhattan transfer, Herb, Alpert, Lonnie Hall Christmas show. Mm-hmm. That was nice. That was fun. I mean, you know, come on. They're, the, historically, both of their music, you know, I it's it's funny. You know, we all individually went, oh, my gosh. My One of my first records was Sergio Mendez in Brazil 66. I knew every <laughs> lick of hers. And then, of course, everyone had the Tijuana Brass albums, right? Herb Albert. Yep. So, you know, we're backstage hearing this going, oh, my gosh. This is like my life in, you know, on stage musically. My upbringing, you know, this is the music we all grew up on. And we, unfortunately, we didn't get to do anything together because it just didn't work out that way. But it was exciting to be on the bill with them. Oh, it was fantastic. What city was and that it in? sounded great. Hmm? What city was that in? We did it in, uh, gosh, we did it at Disney Hall in oh, Los Angeles. Okay. And we did it, oh, I can't remember, a couple shows before that, too. I can't remember where. <laughs> I l- like too long ago. On these intersections with other folks, uh, there's a cat that I don't know if anyone realizes was part of your uh, ensemble of, of uh, workers, really. I guess you'd be behind the scenes, folks. I learned at least from one of your social media posts last year mm-hmm. that the artist who did Mickey was your choreographer at one time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Tony Basil. What are you kidding? <laughs> oh, that was a thrilling time. That's right when I kind of joined the group is when she came on board and just started giving us, you know, a new look, because we had a new singer, had me in the group, and we had new music. And, oh, gosh. She didn't have the hit yet, did she? No, no. But it wasn't long after that. She worked with Greg Matheson, who was a great musician that we'd worked with, and I guess he went in the studio with her and did this. And who knew? I think she knew, because she's brilliant. You know, she knows. She knows what's going on. She knows what's going to hit. You know, still, I think even today, there's a thing on I saw on YouTube. She's dancing. What is she, 72, 73 years old? And she looks like she's 40. She's un, She's like just ageless and timeless. And so un, before she has the, uh, the Hey Mickey gigantic hit, as you were saying, she's teaching you guys what how to move on stage, sort of? Oh, oh yeah. She gave us all kinds of, I mean, she's a brilliant choreographer and she, she knew what to do with us, you know, individually, because that's, that's the key to, to someone like, you know, like us, where you know, we don't feature dancing, we're singers, but she would stage us and place us. And of course, do some moves, some basic like old doo-wop moves. And, and there's one piece where she had us ending up flat on our backs on the stage so she's just pretty out there <laughs> that's that's amazing that uh the connections like that another one uh that i see you were doing a little flashback post on your social media and it goes back to the mid 80s and it was you guys at the white house nancy reagan was in the picture and it made me wonder how many times have you ended up getting to, to play there and for which different presidents mm-hmm. well we yeah that was exciting that was you know, obviously Ronald Reagan, and that was a big Gershwin uh, tribute at the White House. Sarah Vaughan, um, I think Marvin Hamlish, I can't remember, Kitty Carlisle Hart. Uh, it was crazy. Uh, and then, let's see, uh, uh, Bill Clinton, you know, President Clinton, we sang at, um, there was a thing all over uh, D.C., where they were different uh, locations and different bands, Fleetwood Mac, blah, blah, blah. We were at the train station oh, doing a concert. Oh, cool. And then they all, you know, he and Al would, and, and the ladies would walk through all of these different concert, you know, scenes and come on stage and dance while we were singing. So they'd all come on and dance one dance, you know, for the crowd and then move on to the next act. It was pretty fun. Uh, and then uh, George W., we did a Christmas tree lighting. And uh, unfortunately, Obama didn't ask us. Aww. I was real upset. I know. Well, you got it. What'd you get? You got three of them in there. Um, yeah. And yeah. Pretty exciting. Very, very yeah. exciting. Shane Bill didn't grab the sax and do a little jamming with him. I know. Yeah, we didn't have a sax <laughs> on that stage. Otherwise, he may have. You know. <laughs> 
that is that some f- cool. funny stuff. And we mentioned you guys getting awards. Now, you've received uh, a few of the Grammys, right? How many Grammys in all have you got? We have get? 10 altogether. And what do you, so does, do they give yeah. each one of you, like, where, where do you keep your Grammys? Give us a little, a, little, a, a preview. Paint <laughs> well, a picture for know, radio. On a shelf, you know, they're, they're, they're just, you know, they're proudly presented on a shelf. Sometimes they break, which is really a drag because part of them are, are metal and part of it is plastic. And, uh, I know, I know. It's pretty. They're kind of wonky, but they're, they're plastic. Pretty, pretty huh? remarkable. It's pretty fun. Part it's plastic. Very nice. I think that's the first time I've heard that revelation. So you can break them pretty easy, huh? <laughs> yeah. Well, you know the big horn that comes up. That's metal. <laughs> but what it's hooked onto, what it's attached to, is plastic. So if that breaks. I don't know how you would hear those two things. I've tried every glue imaginable. You know, Gorilla Glue, Crazy Glue, <laughs> none of it works. <laughs> some of them are kind of have some duct tape wrapped around them. You know, it's, yeah. Only because for me, I've moved a lot. So when you pack things, you well, know. Well, that's a great happens. lesson for people listening. When you're packing your I, Grammys, make sure to pack them real good. Pack you, them real good. You don't want them to, to have a little crack or whatever. And uh, as we go to wrap it up with you, uh, and you're a lot of fun to talk to, by the way. Um, well, thanks. This is fun. Other people's records that the, the through the years you guys have associated with different folks, they've had you as special guests uh, in the studio and on, on records and stuff uh, and, and live. When you think of some of the other artists, uh, besides Take Six, that you guys have done things either live or in the studio mm-hmm. with, name some of them for folks that, that stick out in your mind as cool times you were asked to be there mm, well early on our christmas record we had tony bennett singing with us on the christmas song recorded was, with him in the yeah, per- he came in on and joined us in our record uh so that was very exciting but i mean recorded was, while you were in the studio together with him yeah amazing yeah, yeah it was wonderful and then uh we did a record called tonin which had all different guests on every cut where we kind of were the background and, and a little bit of foreground, and we'd share some of the solos. And uh, my thrill, well, there were so many thrills on that record. Bette Midler, Phil Collins, um, uh, but, uh, but, uh, I'm, I'm blanking now. But I, I shared a, a lead on La La Means I Love You with Laura Nero, and that was wow. that was so thrilling, I can't tell you. you know. And I was in the studio watching her sing. With Arif, Arif Martin was our producer, so um, that was pretty, pretty phenomenally exciting. That was great, you know. And James Taylor was on that record. Some of these were done separately, but I was in the studio. And Shaka Khan, we were there when she put her vocal on, on uh, Hot Fun in the Summertime. Oh, it was a lot of fun. And of course, you know, it was. Uh, you know, it was thrilling. And so. we, I thought there was somebody else I talked to, and you guys did one of the tunes on one of their records. Um, um, oh boy, I can't remember some of them now. I don't. Uh, well, you've done too much. It's okay. When I'm not going to keep, I'm not going to hang you up on that one. <laughs> and and as final question, uh, unusual bills that you guys have been on with maybe what seemed like incongruous artists at the time, but you look back on it and you get a laugh or a chuckle, or they just ended up being musically either stimulating or just odd, and you think back, man, I can't believe they packaged us with so and so. Well, if you're thinking of packaging in terms of, like, uh, opening acts and, mm-hmm. and we'd show up at a theater, yeah, we had some odd ones. Uh, we did uh, it, uh, Jerry Van Dyke open for us once <laughs> <laughs> at um, in Lake Tahoe, which was very strange. Uh, it was like a New Year's show, and that's, that's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> uh, and then another one, let's see. Um, oh, Harry Shearer open for us. We thought it would be really cool. And he came out and did some Spinal Tap stuff because he was one of Spinal Tap. And, right. and uh, our audience, I felt bad for him because our audience, first of all, they didn't know who he was, <laughs> you know, and uh, they didn't get it. And it was it was pretty, you know, it, it didn't go well. And we loved him. I think he's just 
you know, just a brilliant guy. Yeah. But it just was not a good call, you know. So. <laughs> well, what's a good memory? I'm Give sorry. us one good one to go out on. What's an, uh, one that really uh, stands out as, a, as an impressing you? Or even if it wasn't playing together, maybe a cool heroic encounter that we have. In well, time. we have my favorite moment, I think, of all time, other than getting our first Grammy, was singing with Ella Fitzgerald on the Grammys, which are going to be this Sunday, obviously. And needless to say, they have changed a lot over the years. We presented a, an award, and, and I think it was Ken Ehrlich, who was producing the show, said, I'd like you and Ella Fitzgerald to come on stage and uh, sing something. So we did How High the Moon, a cappella, and wow. then opened it up for her to scat, and the room went crazy. You know, and you looked out in the audience. It's on YouTube. You can find it. And it was just one of those moments where, thank you, God. I mean, it was just unbelievable that we were part of that moment that moment in time when the Grammy Awards were, uh, you know, something else than what they are now. That's all I'm going to say about that. What <laughs> a memory, though, and a huge thrill. Well, that's a that's a great one. I'm gonna I'm gonna try oh. to I'm gonna try to dig it up on and play that as a uh, as the outro music for our, our little. Ooh, thing here. that would be nice. It's only on YouTube. We never recorded it with her. Well, thank you for YouTube. They have a lot of cool stuff on there. Right, for sure. I know it's great. It's, it's Cheryl Benteen, Manhattan transfer, back in the islands and uh, at the Blue Note series of dates. I really appreciate you taking some time and, and doing thank this. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks. See you there. Take care. Aloha. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye.